crazy budget. Can you say I parked my car in the Harvard Yard in your best Boston accent? <laughs> <laughs> I I parked I parked my car in the Harvard Yard. I don't know. It put a, and I put a quarter in the meter. I put a quarter in the. Ah, what am I? I don't know what accent I'm doing right now. But that's like a white person Boston accent. What is the? That's the you know the movie you know the the parted stuff. That's that accent. What is the what is the black Boston accent? To be honest. I never heard no black Boston accent. It's just just a regular, just a... Yeah, it's just that ah sound. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they add that in everything. When did you find out you was first funny? Like, is there a certain memory or... I was the youngest kid. So, you know, youngest kid, you look for attention. But also just being with your friends as a teenager, you just... You had to be funny. You had to be able to crack jokes. Yeah. People roasting. You got somebody say something about your shoes. You got to say <laughs> something about their shoes. Or somebody talk about your haircut. You got to have something to say back. So it was always funny to an extent. But um, yeah, I didn't really pursue it until college. When I, my second year of college, I tried an open mic. I was already in this uh, theater group called Oops Entertainment. And so I was into performing and we you know, was, you know, in the mix of rehearsing for, rehearsing for a play. And I had a friend that was doing open mic stand up. So I went with him to watch it. And then, you know, it looked fun and I wanted to try it. So uh, I tried it the next month and just, and then really enjoyed it and, and fell in love and had a lot of fun doing it. And so I've just been doing it since then. I was almost 14 years ago. Damn, I was only three. <laughs> 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 How was? Um. How was it transitioning from a writer to a performer? Well, I was always, uh, I started out performing, you know, and I, I got the jobs. I wrote on Saturday Night Live in 2009 and, and uh, 30 Rock in, in 2010. And, and so I got those jobs from being a performer. I got the job on Saturday Night Live because I performed on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon and Seth Meyers and the producers from SNL, they saw my set and offered me a writing job from that and then that led to to uh, 30 Rock. So it wasn't really, it was really transitioning from performing to writing and, and um, which is how a lot of people get writing jobs actually, is through their stand-up or through, you know, some of the writers for SNL. So do you still get nervous? Uh, something depends on the situation. If I'm trying a lot of new material, I'm working on a uh, new set now, so I'm trying to get this new set together before I tour. So when I'm trying newer stuff that is, you know, not that refined or not that polished yet, some situations like that. When it's bigger events, sometimes I get a bit nervous. I'm doing this event in Flint, Michigan, on uh, Sunday, and it's uh, yeah, I heard about with uh, Ryan Coogler and Janelle Monae, uh, a bunch of other artist doing it and I'm I'm hosting it and I haven't hosted a big event like that and so I'm a little nervous for that because Flint <laughs> Flint has you know obviously some horrible things going on right now yeah. and I don't want to have a bad comedy show on top of it <laughs> so uh so in certain gig but for the most part just an average stand-up gig I don't really get nervous but some situations but being nervous is good sometimes because it makes you you know want to work hard and do do better how do you get over fails, like a bad show or like a girl turning you down? Get over a bad, ah, uh, those are different things. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bad show, it's gonna, it happens. And it's happened to anybody in entertainment, not only stand up, but music, you know, athletes have bad games. It's just, if you like what you do, you just gotta, you know, keep, keep pushing through and, and want to do it again. And obviously, you don't want to stop. You don't want to have the last thing you did to be something bad, so you just get back at it. Um, as far as girls turning me down, it's just, that happens. It's just you keep it moving. There's a lot of there's a lot of people out there. <laughs> you be cracking jokes on them once they, like, turn you down? No, I, got, I don't do that just because that's a, you know, that's a bad look. You can't, you can't seem petty and bitter. Yeah, I feel you. You can't just be Dennis, <laughs> then that's the story. I turned him down, then he was just talking trash. He, <laughs> he's a petty, mean person. He couldn't handle it. No, you just gotta, it, you, you gotta be able to handle rejection gracefully. And so what's the best compliment you ever received? The best compliment I ever received? 
I mean, best compliment, I, I, I guess, within uh, entertainment, the best compliment is that you, when people want to work with you, uh, or people when people you want you admire want to work with you, you know what I mean? Or just finding out that somebody that I I've admired for a while um, enjoys my work is really cool. I've been a big fan of Dave Chappelle uh, for years, and so over the past few years, I've done a lot of shows with him, and and, and sometimes we'll I'll happen to be in the same city as him, and find out last minute, and he'll just say come through and do a set on the show. Don't come on and just, just jump on if you want to. So that's a huge compliment that he, like, you know, last minute he, he'll find out I'm in town or I, I'll hit him up. He's like, come through and do a set. So that's just to have somebody like that, that I respect, you know, want me to join them on stage is, uh, is real cool. Why did you decide to get involved with Flint? Uh, well, I donated to, to Flint, but uh, Ryan Coogler reached out to me and uh, said he was doing this event. He hit me up. Um, it was last week, actually. It was just this, it was Saturday. He hit me up um, and asked if I wanted to host and, and, and help out. And so I, I said, yeah, down to do it. It's just, uh, it's a really messed up situation when you, if you look at what's been going on with it, where the government had the information that, you know, you know that that the water was going to be messed up, or that yeah. they shouldn't switch to that to that river. And they still decided to to do it. So um, you know, um, it's really yeah, it's a it's a tough situation. So he wanted to put on an event for the for the people there, just to not only raise money but also you know give them you know some some uh, release. You know what I mean? Just something yeah. else to to kind of distract from from what's distract and bring attention to what's going on just to you know with, with entertainment why do you think people should be involved in these type of issues if it's a a way that you can help within your means and, and it's just uh it's really messed up just to if, if a whole city's a few hundred thousand people's water supply uh is poison like a city you know like children have been poisoned you know so uh it's uh yeah it's really tough so if you you know people can help um they can i can help with you know donating time or or money or my talents or whatever and, and and so people help how they can if you could wake up tomorrow and the body is someone else what would you who would you pick and what would you do uh Donald Trump and I kill myself. No. <laughs> That's no. crazy. Uh, <laughs> no, um who would I who would I wake whose body would I wake up in? I don't know. It'd be fun to just be <laughs> Like a seven foot tall person that's not a basketball player, cause just to see how how <laughs> annoying that is. Cause there's a couple people like that, that's seven feet tall, but don't play professional ball or don't play at all. So everybody that's tall gotta play ball. That's how people would. <laughs> that's that's what people would ask me, and that's what I would I would uh, I would probably snap on people. <laughs> I just want to see what that would be like for people, cause people would just keep asking me if I play basketball. Yeah. And I'm like no. <laughs> I work at Jimmy John's. Ah. Is everybody is tall have to play ball? Why are you, why are you bothering? Yeah, I feel you. But thank you for speaking with us. No problem. Thank y'all. We brought a little something. What you bring? Oh. Gift from Press Pass. Thank you. This is dope. Oh, some apple juice. <laughs> this is dope. Got a shirt. A lot of apple juice. <laughs> <laughs>